How did a company best known for Clippy become responsible for Halo? Adventures in Tech explains how Microsoft found its cool and created the very first Xbox. No one expected Microsoft to reshape the world of video games. For starters, it wasn't the kind of company that made awesome games machines, it was the kind of company that hired the cast of Friends to make ill-advised Windows 95 promos. And where is the button that instantly kills anybody that calls me honey? <laughs> <laughs> when you upgrade... Anyway, when Bill Gates revealed plans to build a console, we all enjoyed a good chuckle. But while Microsoft had no experience making consoles, it knew more about gaming than many of us assumed. Several years earlier, Microsoft had forged DirectX, a series of tools for building games for Windows. Developers were already used to using these tools, thanks in no small part to Bill Gates himself extolling their virtues from inside a game of Doom. These games are getting really realistic. DirectX had already made a console appearance as part of a Windows CE version that Microsoft built for the Dreamcast. In the end though, it was only used by a handful of games. Something more drastic was required. Four members of the DirectX team built a prototype console and pitched the Direct Xbox to Microsoft's Ed Freeze. The project took off with a shorter name, and a few years later we got our first look at the Xbox, which was shown off looking like a massive silver X. It's a good job they changed it, because that design would have made for a problematic sequel. Ladies and gentlemen, the sequel to the Xbox! Microsoft built the Xbox on Windows, cutting down development time by using off-the-shelf or barely modified PC components like its Intel Pentium 3 processor. It was the first console to come with a built-in hard drive and even had its own Ethernet port. It was powerful too, Microsoft boasted its system was more than three times as graphically capable as the PS2, pushing 300 million polygons per second. Hardware was only half the battle, gamers wanted games. As such, Microsoft invested some of its cash in a title that would become a global phenomenon. Developed by Bungie Studios, Halo was first shown off in 1999 by Apple's Steve Jobs and was intended to run on Mac and Windows. When Microsoft bought Bungie, Halo became an exclusive Xbox launch title, one that hit a million sales in just four months. That incredible success was replicated in 2004 with Halo 2, which provided a perfect launch pad for the Xbox Live online service. Halo 2 became the fastest selling media product ever, making $125 million in 24 hours just in the US, and leaving Sony scrambling to think up a blockbuster shooter of its own. Microsoft drafted the ailing Sega to publish a slew of games for the Xbox, also nabbing some neat exclusives. Over the years, the system would play host to plenty of great games, and by the time the Xbox 360 was out, sales of the original had hit 24 million units. The Xbox wasn't perfect, it had the world's chunkiest controller, and by the time the 360 took over, the PS2 had outsold it by roughly 4 to 1. That didn't matter though, because Microsoft had managed what nobody thought possible, establishing a foothold on the mighty mountain of console gaming. Perhaps Microsoft's greatest trick was not overthinking it, it made a console that was basically a PC in a box and ensured it had plenty of great games. Today the Xbox One has Kinect, TV integration and much more, but you have to wonder whether Microsoft has lost sight of the simple principles that made its first console such a success. Did you own an original Xbox and what do you think of Microsoft's gaming powers today? Let me know and check back next time for another Adventure in Tech. Don't interrupt me.